All right. So again, hello there and thank you for coming back into my channel. Thank you for clicking this video lesson again. And yes, for today, we are going to have Arts 8 Quarter 1 Module Number 1, Lesson Number 1, Fabric Design, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore. Now let us have the content standard. The learner understands the salient features of the arts of Southeast Asia by showing the relationship of the elements of art and processes among culturally diverse communities in the region. Performance standard, the learner creates artworks showing the characteristics or characteristic elements of the arts performance standard the learner creates artworks showing the characteristic elements of the arts of southeast asia okay for the learning competencies the learner number one analyzes elements and principles of art in the production of arts and crafts inspired by the cultures of southeast asia a8 e l i b one number two identifies characteristics of arts and crafts in specific countries in southeast asia like indonesia batik wayang puppetry uh, malaysia modern batik wau and objects from putter okay thailand silk fabrics and loy kratong lantern festival cambodia angkor wat and temples or asian temples singapore merlion etc a8 el1 or ib2 okay now for the objectives during this lesson or in this lesson we are going or the learner okay in this lesson the learner identifies the characteristics of arts and crafts in specific countries in Southeast Asia, okay, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, etc. Letter B analyzes art elements like color, line, shape, etc. and principles. Texture, proportion, emphasis, harmony, etc. in the production of arts and crafts inspired by the cultures of Southeast Asia. Okay, now before we move on to our discussion of this lesson, let us have these pictures first. Let us have the first one. Okay, so what do you think this one is? Yes, very good. This one is a kite. And this kite is yes from malaysia we call it wau or kite in malaysia and this one is actually also called as uh, wait for a moment okay and this one is actually called wait i will get the pen so this one is Okay, I'll get a pen. So this one is called Wau Bulan. Wau Bulan. Wau means kite. Okay, and Wau Bulan means moon kite or um Wau Bulan is the Malaysian moon kite. So as you can see here, uh, Wau Bulan is an intricately designed Malaysian moon kite, normally with, as you can see, floral designs or floral motifs, right? That is traditionally flown in the Malaysian state of Kelantan, okay? Now, oh, the logo of Malaysian Airlines is based on the Wau Kusing. I'm going to write it down here. Okay, Wau. Okay, Wau Kusing. Oh, sorry. Wau Kusing. And Wau Kusing is a cat kite. 
Okay, cut, kite. So next time I need a pen. <laughs> okay, so this one is called the cut kite. Wa ukusin. So the Malaysian Airlines has, or Malaysian Airlines have this logo, wa ukusin on their planes. And each with its own. So we there are many types of wau or kites in Malaysia, and each with their own or with their special purposes or with its own. Each with its own specialty. So this kite, uh, the frame actually of wau is made from light, flexible bamboo. And the strips measured and tied together by means of thin string. Okay, now let us move on to the next one. Okay, so we have here this. If I'm not mistaken, we already talked about this last time from your last lesson. Can you still remember? Okay, so this one is very good from Singapore. And this is called merlion. So again, merlion comes from, uh, so again, merlion's body symbolizes Singapore's humble beginnings when Singapore was only a fish, fishing village, which was called Temasek. Okay, Singapore was a fishing village before, a small fishing village, which is actually, or which was called the Masek, okay, from the word Tasek. Okay, and Tasek in Malay means lake. Okay, so again, Merlion symbolizes Singapore's humble beginnings when it was only. Okay, when it was still fishing village, and that fishing village was called Temasek, okay, from the word Tasek, which means lake in Malay, okay? And then the head of Merlion, again, as you can see, is a head of a lion, or the head, the head of Merlion is lion's head okay it symbolizes or represents singapura okay singapura in malay means the lion city okay and then with the body of a fish okay now let's move on to the next one okay how about this can you still remember this this one yes is from the philippines where in the philippines very good. This one is Bulul from Ifugao. Okay, Bulul from Ifugao is a wooden structure or a curved wooden structure, a wooden figure used to guard the rice crops by the Ifugao. Okay, wooden images of the ancestors in a museum in Bontok, a mountain province. Okay. Okay, next one. What do you think this one is? Very good. So this one is a puppet. And in Indonesia, it is called wayang. Wayang is used in shadow puppetry performances or theater, which they call wayang kulit. Okay, so wayang kulit is a type of performance or wayang kulit is a traditional form of puppet shadow play originally found in the cultures of Java, Bali, and Lombok in Indonesia. So in a wayang kulit, there is dalang. Okay, so what is dalang or who is dalang? Okay, dalang is... The one, okay, dalang is the one who manipulates the puppets or the dalang shadow artist, okay, dalang shadow artist man that manipulates carved leather figures between the lamp and the screen to bring the shadows to life. It's mainly about good versus evil, okay. Next. 
How about this one? What do you call this? Yes, very good. This one is a hat and we call this songkok. Muslim meals and usually songkok or we also call this pesi or kopia. A cap widely worn in Indonesia and Brunei, Malaysia, Singapore, South, even Southern Philippines or Southern Thailand, and most commonly among Muslim males. Okay, it, it is also worn, it is also worn by males in funeral gatherings or formal gatherings, formal occasions, such as Idil Ada. All right, can you still remember that? Idil Fitir, okay, holidays. In, um, in, in Indonesia, in, the Pasi is also associated with the nationalist movement. Okay, and the last picture before we continue with our discussion is, yes, this one, some pot or the Cambodian silk. So we are going to learn more about these pictures in our discussion for today. So let's start. Let us have the first country. So we are going to talk about Thailand. And as you can see here, Thailand is one of the popular country, countries when it comes to silk, when it comes to silk, or when it comes to silk making, silk weaving. Okay, so here, Thai silk is produced from the cocoons of Thai silk worms. It is mainly produced in Korat, which is the center of the silk industry in Thailand. Thai weavers from this region raise the caterpillars on a steady diet of mulberry leaves. Today, Thai silk making is considered to be one of the finest arts in the world, a product of a unique manufacturing process and bearing unique patterns and colors. Okay, now let us have the next country, Cambodia. Cambodia, again, as you can see here, they also have silk products. Okay, and Cambodia, if the Philippines or if the Philippines has cotton, can you still remember cotton? Cotton is the wrap around weight. So I am going to type it down or write it down. Okay, so we have here cotton. Cotton actually is the cotton is the term that we use to refer to the wrap around skirt of the people or the women from Kalinga. Okay. So that is Kain. Kain, again, the wrap around skirt from Kalinga. We already discussed that during your grade seven class. Or we you already you already learned that from your grade seven class before. Okay, and then the next one, we also have tapis. Do you know what tapis is? Okay, tapis actually is the term that we use whenever we whenever we wrap around the towels right wrap around the towels and our body after taking a shower or taking a bath and then we use tapis okay however tapis originally tapis means like the wrap around skirt of women from luzon okay and then from mindanao we have the what we call malung okay malung Malong the wrap around skirt of women from Mindanao. Okay, now in Cambodia, as you can see, they are all wearing wrap around skirts. And in Cambodia, we call them sampot. Okay, we call them sampot. S A M P O some pot okay so some pot this refers to the wrap around skirts of women in cambodia all right next the silk weaving in cambodia dates to as early as the first century since textiles were used for trading modern textiles have traces of motifs imitating clothing details on ancient stone sculptures Okay, there are actually two main types of Cambodian weaving. The first one is the Ika technique, Khmer term chongkia, to create patterns, weavers tie and dye portions of weft yarn before weaving begins. Okay, actually, Ikat 
comes from the word tie or comes from a word which means tie or not. K-N-O-T. Okay, in this process or in this technique, um, the weavers, the weavers tie the yarn first and then dye portions of it. Okay, again, tie the yarn and then dye and then untie and then tie again, dye and then untie, tie again, dye and then untie. Okay, so they repeat this technique until they get the desired pattern of their yarns, the desired color of their yarns. And then after that, they start the weaving process. So again, when we say Ika technique, it's to create patterns through tying or knotting and then dyeing, okay? portions of weft yarn before weaving begins later i'll show you an example oh here so this is an example of yarns from ika technique okay so they tie it and then dye it and then repeat until they get this kind of design or their desired design or pattern okay next the next pattern or the next technique, we have an even twill. It yields single or two color fabrics, which are produced by weaving three threads so that the color of one thread dominates on one side of the fabric while the two others determine the color on the reverse side. So meaning to say the two colors on the reverse side are stronger than the other color on the other side okay then on that side on the other side that one color dominates in the other two colors okay so that's an event will traditionally cambodian textiles have employed natural dyes coming from insect dyes red dye Okay, indigo, blue dye, pro hot, yellow dye, ebony bark, black dye. So this is an example of an event wheel technique. Warp and then weft. Okay, next, from Laos. Okay, so here, as you can see, we have here this not really wrap around skirt, but an ankle long skirt of women from Laos. So let's talk about Laos more. According to Lao tradition, stories of their history were not passed on orally, nor was it written. They were woven. Okay, now let's go back to your grade 7 class again. Can you still remember Tiboli from Cotabato? Okay, um, can you still remember Tiboli from Mindanao? Okay. Tivoli are the what we call the Tivolis are the what we call the dream weavers. Why? Okay, because they believe that their ancestors visit them in their dreams to give the patterns or the weaving designs that they should weave, that they should do, okay, that they should make. So their patterns, their weaving patterns, their weaving designs are from their dreams or from their ancestors in their dreams. Now in Laos, in Lao or according to Lao tradition, Lao means the people from Laos. Okay, stories of their history were not passed on orally. So if Tibuli's design or weaving designs are from, are from their ancestors in their dreams, Lao weaving designs are from their history, Lao's history or Lao history. Okay, because stories of their history were not passed on orally, nor it was nor was it written they were woven strand by strand lao stories were weaved in the intricate dance patterns and motifs of textiles unfortunately some are elaborately fantastic 
so complicated and the motive so cryptic that in many cases only the weaver can actually accurately interpret the story okay so next most diverse of these stories are the ones woven into a scene okay so into a scene this one is the what we call the scene okay scene is the ankle long knee or the ankle long skirt of women from laos the lao the lao women's ankle long skirt scene which has patterns that are actually unique to each one okay next one we have vietnam All right so in vietnam golden thread silks were born in vietnam like this golden threads All right and many of our Vietnamese fabrics originated from Hadong, the center of weaving and sericulture, silk worm production, okay, for centuries. Old jacquard looms are still used, weaving patterns containing centuries, old symbols and characters. Some popular Vietnamese fabric ranges are Shantong Tafeta, Bengalin Weave, Ebony Satin and all natural lustrous silk hand woven in southern vietnam next indonesia malaysia and singapore this one is the what we call batik and we are going to do this you are going to create this kind of artwork on your own so listen carefully indonesia malaysia and singapore so this is the what we call the batik design b a t i k batik okay batik design so now uh the fabric most common to both countries indonesia malaysia and singapore is the batik the, the term batik is an indonesian malay word believed to be related to the malay word titik or titik which means point dot or drop the drop action refers to the process of dyeing the fabric by making use of a resist technique covering areas of cloth with a dye resistance or dye resistant substance usually they use hot wax to prevent them from absorbing colors okay there are two categories of batik design the first one geometric motifs okay and the next one free form designs okay so see these are all examples of the batik designs from indonesia malaysia and singapore okay now malaysia in malaysia the states of kelantan and taranganu taranganu are considered the cradle where batik first flourish reaching even singapore's shoes Okay, so we have two um, techniques. Number one, hand painted. As you can see in the picture, or in this picture, the artist uses the canting, a small copper container with one or more different size pipes. And they use the pipes to hand paint the design of this textile or this batik design. Number two, block printed, done by welding together metal of or strips of metal to form a metal this is not lock but block so metal block okay and then dip uh, into molten wax all right and design the fabric okay like this as you can see in the picture so this is the block the metal block with designs on it and then the design looks like this all right next brunei so let's have brunei brunei's traditional textile is also called batik okay but it is uniquely different from indonesia malaysia and singapore why its design have their national flower but um brunei's national flower simpur sumboy sumboy picture plant and Brunei's traditional design of ear mole. Okay, questions? 
No questions? Okay, so let's summarize. Again, we studied about Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore. And we are going to learn more about these countries um, in our next videos or next lessons. Okay, but for now, let us answer these questions. Okay, so let us have number one. I'll give you 10 seconds to answer each question. So we have three questions. Number one, how do you call the technique in which the weavers create patterns first, tie and dye portion of weft yarn before weaving begins? It will be a katsiwa o diwayang. Very good. That is ikat. Okay, did you get your answer correct? Great. Number two. If the Philippines has kain, patadyong, malong, and tapis, how do people in Laos call their wrap around skirts? Ewao, biwayang, si songkot, di sampot. Let us see. Great! Did you get your, did you get your answer correct? The correct answer is sampot. Okay, next number three and the last one. This is a hat widely worn in Indonesia, Brunei, Malaysia, Singapore, and mostly among Muslim males in formal gatherings such as weddings, funerals, or festivals. What do you call this? A wa ubi wayang si songkot di sampot. Let us see if your answer is correct. There you go. The correct answer is letter C. All right. So did you get all the correct answers? All right. There you go. Congratulations then because you learned again something from this video lesson. Now our time is up. And it's time for us again to say goodbye. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet to this video, to this channel, then click subscribe, then like and share. If you want to share knowledge also to your classmates or to your friends who are also studying grade 8. Mape. Okay, so again, thank you so much. Again, this is teacher CJ or CJ Sam. And let us continue to learn while having fun. Goodbye. Thank you.